come here to uh, West Africa and actually to Africa, I will have a longer trip around the African continent in order to build up and strengthen the historic relations that there are between uh, the Palestinian people and the African people and the common struggle of the people against colonialism, against oppression and for freedom, justice and equality. And I came here and I realized that this is not only something that is in the history of uh, the liberation struggles uh, of Africa and of uh, the Palestinian people. And from the uh, 50s, 60s and the great African uh, leaders that have already understood uh, how closely connected the struggles are, uh, Today I'm seeing how in the reality, the reality of the African people and the Palestinian people and their struggles are connected. When I see how people in Africa are losing their homes, are forced into migration, forced to be refugees, uh, when I see how war is affecting them, when I see how uh, uh, they're losing land, uh, their natural resources are exploited from uh, outside and outside forces, then I see Palestine, then I see how Israel is day after day stealing Palestinian land, destroying entire Palestinian villages and sending the Palestinian people into refugee and more than half of the Palestinian people since generations are refugees and are struggling for their right to return and struggling for their freedom and liberation. And in that sense, I feel when I'm coming here, when I'm coming to Dakar, I feel that I'm actually coming as well to Palestine and to the same uh, idea of struggle for justice. And for Palestinians, Africa is not only something where there is an intrinsic connection, it is as well a big inspiration of hope. Because the African people have overcome uh, colonialism, direct colonialism, have overcome apartheid. And this is exactly what Palestinians are struggling today. And African people have shown it is possible to win and to overcome apartheid. And we're looking at Africa with this idea that this is a, a hope and inspiration for everybody. Today, the situation is uh, dramatic. If we look at Jerusalem, uh, the mere existence of Palestinians in Jerusalem is every day under threat. People are losing their homes. Uh, uh, settler organizations are coming in to take over their homes. Uh, Israeli military is destroying homes. Uh, it is almost impossible for Palestinians from outside Jerusalem to come into the, into the city, into their capital. In Gaza, it is an ongoing open-air prison where nothing can come in and nothing can come out. Uh, uh, not even the needed me medicine can come in or the me needed fuel can come in. Everything is controlled by Israel with repeated bombing attacks. The last uh, was only uh, this May, but every three, four, five years, there's a large scale massacre against the uh, population in Gaza. In the West Bank, uh, the, a similar situation where people are uh, surrounded by what Palestinians call an apartheid wall, an eight meter high cement wall that is surrounding villages, that is surrounding refugee camps and stealing the lands and the water and the resources of the Palestinian people. We cannot talk about the Palestinian people uh, without talking about the refugees. More than half of the Palestinian people are refugees and every day more Palestinians become refugees. We cannot talk about the Palestinian people without talking about the daily repression, uh, the arrests, uh, the torture uh, inside the prisons. Uh, almost half of the Palestinian male population at least once in their life passes through an Israeli jail and that gives the idea of the constant repression and oppression of the people. The 
boycott, divestment and sanctions movement, that movement in 2005 was called for by Palestinian civil society, inspired by the South African struggle against apartheid, and saying that uh, in Palestine there is the Israeli version of apartheid, there is the 21st century version of apartheid, and we all know how to fight apartheid, that is through boycotts, through divestment and sanctions, and that movement is a powerful tool for everybody and is uh, one of the most effective tools to actually overcome Israel's apartheid regime. I know and we all know that there is a strong solidarity on the ground in, uh, in Africa by the people and I'm experiencing it literally every day being here. Uh, we know as well that Israel is trying to infiltrate and gain influence uh, within Africa, within African governments, within the African Union in order to shift that popular support uh, or if it cannot shift the popular support, at least the support of the governments. And uh, what we expect really is that governments stand strong with uh, uh, the principles and with the defense of human rights, uh, including Palestinian human rights. And at the very moment, there is a key crucial question that we're dealing with, which is uh, the unfortunate uh, and unilateral decision by the chair of the African Union, uh, Musa Faki Muhammad, who has, uh, without any consultation with member states, decided to accept the request of Israel to become an observer state. Fortunately, over 20 uh, uh, governments have already explicitly stated uh, their objection to that decision and many more civil society organizations and movements across uh, Africa have uh, started uh, a campaign to pressure governments uh, to reject that decision by uh, Musa Faki Muhammad because uh, the organization of African Union never gave a space to Israeli apartheid to sit on the table and to defend and legitimize its apartheid regime. Why should the African Union give a space on the table to Israel to defend and legitimize its apartheid regime? What we're really calling for is uh, uh, the African Union, the African governments, all those that haven't spoken out yet, and especially in West Africa, we have many countries that we believe uh, strongly are standing with the Palestinian cause and haven't spoken out to speak out uh, uh, in front uh, of their own people, in front of the Palestinian people, in front of the African Union and the world and say, Apartheid does not have a space in the African Union. Israel has no space and no right to sit at the table as an observer in, uh, at the African Union. The egregious injustice uh, that Israel since uh, decades is uh, meting out against the Palestinian people. I guess uh, in the 80s one couldn't be an anti-racist person and not stand up against Isra uh, South African apartheid. Today one cannot be anti-racist, one cannot be anti-colonial, one cannot be for social justice and for human rights without standing up uh, against Israeli apartheid colonialism and occupation. So for me it was really a natural uh, response to a human drive for justice uh, to take a position. And uh, I guess it is important to see how over the last decades uh, public opinion has shifted even in uh, uh, states uh, where historically there was a support, less support for Palestine. We see that today, even in the US Congress, 
We have congressmen and congresswomen speaking out in favor of Palestine. We have uh, more and more support uh, to ask the UN to investigate and uh, punish and end Israeli apartheid across the globe. And we really hope that from the African people we can get that same support and can work together to ensure that Africa once again is spearheading the new 21st century anti-apartheid movement. That I know about their support and it is absolutely crucial uh, to understand that uh, their role is fundamental. Our role as woman, women is fundamental. The role of the youth is fundamental. To go out in the streets, uh, to organize in their organizations and in their movements and networks and not to be silent about the Palestinian issue. Because the Palestinian issue is, an is, is a feminist issue, is a women's rights issue, is a youth rights issue. When you are a Palestinian youth, you are not uh, able to cross an Israeli checkpoint to even get out of your uh, home and your village to go to your university, to your job, without being harassed by Israeli military. You are repressed for being a new generation because Israel does not want a new generation of Palestinians fighting. When you are a Palestinian woman, you are repressed and you are attacked for being the force, uh, the element that is reproducing Palestinian society, physically and socially. And that is what Israel does not want. For all of us that are struggling for the rights of women and for the ri uh, rights of youth, for a new generation of struggle, we need to stand together with the Palestinian people.